Thank you, Evan, for that prelude. <laughs> Thank you. And welcome all. Um, I can't see you. Hopefully you can see me and hear me. Uh, we will be doing this different experience as an experiment. We thank you for joining. Um, please be patient with the imperfections. Uh, we look forward to your feedback and your suggestions. Um, I want to say that Rachel, uh, who will be leading our music, um, is in her car. And so um, that is my fault because uh, in all of our communication back and forth, uh, the last thing I had said to her was that she and Evan were gonna be in church, um, but she can't get into the church because it's on lockdown. So, um, and just to explain how things will work, um, you will be muted as you are now. Um, so, it is safe for you to join along on the songs and nobody will hear you but your dog or your cat or whoever else is in the house with you. Um, and we invite you to um, also say the spoken responses, um, which are in bold. Uh, um, forever is dead, um, and sing everything but the anthem. So um, we'll begin and uh, this is a morning prayer service which is new for many of you uh, because we haven't done this before at St. Athanasius. So um, I look forward to uh, learning this together with you. Um, let us begin with a moment of silence um, and then Rachel will begin singing, O Lord, hear my prayer. Um, and you are welcome to sing along with her and we will not hear you whether you're singing beautifully or off key as I would be. Blessings. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and repents of evil. Friends, let us confess our sins against God 
and our neighbor first in silence and then speak in each of your spaces as I lead us. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. Together, O Lord, make haste to help us. Now, um, Rachel will be the only one unmuted for the Venite. This is a new song for most of us. Um, so in the silence of your learning over the next few weeks. Um, so just keep trying to, to learn it. Rachel. We will now um, sing and chant the, the psalm appointed for today, which is Psalm 23. Uh, and we will do it in our usual fashion, where Rachel will sing the lead part, and then we will join on the response. Yane will be unmuted to lead us in the response. my shepherd I shall not be in want he makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters he revives my soul 
and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning he is now and will be forever. Amen. Now Gertie is going to read us the reading from the letter to the Ephesians. Once you were darkness, but now in the light, you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what some people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Now, um... We are going to say Canticle 14 in unison. Yane will be unmuted so that we will hear her voice, but we invite each of you to say it in the silence of your unmuted selves. Of your muted selves, sorry. <laughs> Let us read together Canticle 14, a song of penitence. O Lord and ruler of the host of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal, sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the death of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. I want to remind everyone that is on that if you received the email uh, and have not downloaded the bulletin, it is an attachment to the email I sent yesterday, and you can download it and follow along. Um, and I am now going to read the gospel for the morning. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. 
As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought to him to the Pharisees, this man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. And he said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he see now? His parents answered, we know that this is our son. We know that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he's of age, he'll speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I don't know whether he's a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I've told you already, and you wouldn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. The man answered, Well, here's an astonishing thing. You don't know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began, has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind? If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say, we see, your sin remains.
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. So we're going to see how preaching works, standing in my own room, my own house, um, and speaking with you all. This is a long lesson that we've heard, and the story, of course, speaks for itself. But I want to share some thoughts about where we are and how we are living in these times in light of this passage. I had a friend in South Africa who visited me in the early 90s when I was living in Mexico and when South Africa was in the process of undoing 50 years of apartheid. The separation of the races and the inferiority of people of color were established by law in that country. I remember one day sitting on the steps outside our house in Mexico with Nico, laughing and drinking beer. And Nico told me about a new saying that was going around South Africa at the time. He said, it's a strange, strange world we live in, Master Jack. It was indeed strange. South Africans had been living under the system of apartheid for nearly half a century and actually much longer if one takes into account the informal apartheid that had gone on for many years before 1948. And now they were living in a new world that didn't have any established new laws yet. People didn't know what was expected of them. People didn't know how to behave. The law changed quickly, but their hearts didn't change as fast. So they were confused. Today, as we face the new world of coronavirus, people the world over could say the same thing. It's a strange, strange world we live in, Master Jack. But actually, instead of making a statement, a lot of us are asking questions. How am I supposed to spend my time when I can't go to work? How do we entertain ourselves when there are no sports events, theater? or movies to attend? How do I stay in shape when I can't go to the gym? How will I pay my rent if I get laid off from my job? How will my children get educated when I'm not a teacher? The governments are also asking questions they perhaps should have asked before this crisis. What do we do with homeless people now that they're at greater risk and put the general population at risk if they use up all the hospital beds? And should we allow undocumented immigrants to be tested for free, since they will also infect others? And then there's the question that's on everybody's mind. How long is this going to last? The season of Lent is a period of preparation for the new world of resurrection. The letter to the Ephesians that Gertie read says, everything exposed by the light becomes visible. That's what happens with resurrection. Everything is seen in a new light. So Lent is a time before the resurrection to explore the darkness. So we're not caught off guard when the light of resurrection bursts into the world. Lent does that by focusing, by inviting us to focus on life's essentials by practicing prayer and fasting. So what does Lent invite us to explore this year as it coincides with this quarantine for coronavirus? Many new reasons to pray and many new forms of fasting have been thrust upon us this year. We pray for answers to those questions I asked earlier. We pray for those who are already sick with the virus. We pray that our families and friends and we ourselves won't get sick. We pray that our leaders will guide us wisely to reduce the number of deaths. And we fast. We fast from work, from entertainment, from exercise, from parties, and yes, even from church. Even the way we are worshiping together today on the internet is a new way to pray and a new form of fasting. 
most of us haven't had to do much of that before. I know I've never lived in quarantine. I've never been isolated. This is indeed a strange, strange world for us. But it's not strange for everyone, is it? Prisoners, for example, have lots of experience relating to the outside world in a kind of quarantine. They know what this is like. They even have to talk to their visitors by phone through a glass. I remember once performing a wedding in a jail where the groom was behind the glass and spoke on a phone to the bride and me. And others, soldiers, people with contagious diseases and others, they've had to fast from physical contact. Perhaps they can be our teachers during this time of quarantine. And that's exactly what the blind man was doing for the religious leaders in the story. He became their teacher, even though they weren't willing to receive the teaching. They thought they were the teachers, the spiritually sighted. The blind man who was healed had clearer spiritual vision than the religious leaders themselves. And the religious leaders thought they were free, just like we do. But when certain freedoms are taken away, the shallow roots of those freedoms and actually the lack of true freedom we don't have the freedom to go to church. Many things that we thought we already knew are called into question in this strange new world. And that too is what was going on in the story of the blind man in today's gospel. Jesus' disciples asked a question from the old world. Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? They had no doubt that his blindness was the result of sin. It was just a matter of whose sin? No one was thinking about healing or caring for the man. They simply wanted Jesus' answer to a theoretical question about the relationship between blindness and sin. Well, Jesus never answered, never answered the question. Um, and his answer questioned the theological assumption. His answer was, neither this man nor his parents sin. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Do you see how Jesus shifted the ground immediately? He spoke from a new world that sounded strange to the ears of the disciples and to the religious leaders. He's saying it's not about who sinned, it's about what we are going to do about it. Not even just what Jesus is going to do. It says we must work the works of the one who sent me. What is that work? Jesus shows that God doesn't relate to us only around our sin. So our work, like his, has to do more with love and light and healing, which are much more central for God even than sin. The theoretical question, then, only matters when it leads to right practice. Jesus is saying, don't worry about why the man is blind. Allow his blindness to be an opportunity to practice God's healing work. Even though in 2020, very few people be believe that blindness is caused by a specific sin, many people do think that God is punishing them uh, for whenever a, a malady happens uh, to them or to someone else. That assumption isn't even questioned. There have certainly been many examples of this since the rise of the coronavirus, haven't there? Preachers and politicians have blamed the virus on the Chinese, on gays, on left-wing socialists, on Democrats, on the pro-choice pro movement, among many others. And then young adults, In. 
it turns out that many people feel better once they find someone to blame for what's going wrong. COVID-19 may be remembered as the disease that divided us. But the problem with that kind of thinking isn't only that it intensifies discrimination. It also distracts us from what really matters, which is caring for those in need. But there's another path, isn't there? We can acknowledge the limitations we discover during this period. We can allow those we have seen as the limited ones before this. We can allow them to be our teachers, opening our eyes to the path through this crisis. It is a strange world, Master Jack. And in that world, we might be surprised by the ones who become our guides. We are called to exercise the spiritual vision shown by the blind man and to renounce the assumed wisdom of the leaders of the old world, which is fading away. My friends, may you find the Christ in the least expected people and places during these days, so that in the new world of resurrection, we might have greater capacity to love. Amen. So before we continue, I want to ask Yane to unmute us all and we can share the peace with each other uh, in virtual fashion. You can <laughs> hug your computer, you can hug yourself as a, as a hug for everyone. Um, but let's let the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Also with you. Also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Great to see you all. Hey, David. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. <laughs> James, peace be with you. <laughs> hey, Andy. James, hello there. <laughs> That's where I wish I was. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What a great moment. <laughs> That's <laughs> worth the price of admission to this thing, I would say. <laughs> Blessings to all of you in this moment of peace. <laughs> all right, now you're going to have to listen to me again. <laughs> I want us to uh, move into the news of the people, and I just have a, a couple of things I want to share. Uh, one is I sent in the moment the offertory, the offering. Um, so I want to invite you. Uh, live online and you can go to our website which is s-a-i-n-t-a-l-a dot org and at the top right corner of the home page there is a the word donate you can click on that and when the page opens just scroll down and follow the instructions um, after you have set an amount it will invite you to make a note um, and so i did this yesterday so i know how it works and and uh I paid my pledge for today, yesterday, and I just said in the note, this is my pledge for March 22nd. Do that. Um, and as I wrote in that, also, we know that this is a time when people are losing jobs, are working less, are receiving less income. And if you have needs, uh, Yane and I both have discretionary funds that we can use to help you. They're limited. Uh, if you'd like to give to those by designating, you can do that online as well. Um, I would encourage you not to send them in the mail, the checks, because uh, as Rachel learned the hard way this morning, we can't even get into the parking lot. Um, and so we can't get in to get the mail. And so if you can uh, post it on, on the website, that would be great. Thank you so much. Um, but give us a call, be in touch with each other. I sent also the list of um, uh, phone numbers and emails so that you can be in touch with each other and feel free to call 
uh, call me back or call Yane if you have a need um, to um, talk or, or a financial need or something else, okay? Um, so I see that we're still all unmuted, um, but now as we go into this moment of offering, uh, we're going to invite Rachel to um, sing the anthem. Um, and uh, then when she finishes, we will go into the time of prayer. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> I am sure there is no more beautiful music coming out of any car from in, uh, Echo Park. <laughs> Thank you so much. What a great gift to be able to share cybernetically. <laughs> so welcome. <laughs> so we are going to go into the time of prayer. And um, at one point when we are doing the prayers of the people, Yane will unmute us all and we invite different ones of you to uh, share specific prayer requests that we can share together as we do on a Sunday morning. But let us begin um, by saying the Lord's Prayer together um, and uh, all of you will be muted, um, but we can say it um, in the, the quiet of our own space. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your will, will be done, done on earth, on earth as, as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 
in the suffrages that follow, I will be saying the, uh, the part that says V and the R that is in bold, uh, Yane will be saying, but we invite all of you to join along uh, in the silence. Let us pray. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let me pray this collect for Lent. Blessed are you, God of holiness and mercy. You never abandon your people. You see our misery, you hear our cry, and you come swiftly to our deliverance. You shatter the hardness of our hearts and open our minds to the wisdom of the gospel, that we may grasp the lessons you teach us daily and bring forth the fruit of true and continual conversion. For these and all your mercies, we praise you, as everyone says, blessed be God forever. So at this point, Yane is going to unmute all of us, and uh, I invite you to share um, intercessions, to, to share requests. If someone else um, starts the same time you do, you know, one of you stop and, and we'll figure it out. Do awkward, I think. Yeah. We're listening. I'd like to pray for all of the healthcare workers, all of the people who assist doctors and nurses in the hospitals, all the doctors, all the nurses, all those who care for the elderly, all those who care for the disabled. Amen. I'd like to pay, uh, pray for all of the people who are out there that don't have personal protective gear, like the people in the grocery stores, the grocery checkers, the grocery stalkers, the people who are bringing meals, all of the people that are um, taking care of those of us who are sheltered in place. Amen. 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 I'd like to pray for everyone who is afraid right now that they are sick and not knowing what to do, how to be sure that they are or are not. Amen. 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 I'd like to pray for all those in the underground economy, the undocumented, the artists and freelance people, the um, musicians, the um, sex workers, all of those who make their living uh, on the outside. I'd like to pray for them to find sustenance in this time. Yes. Amen. 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 I'd like to pray for the homeless. Mm -hmm. And also for our leaders and pray that the new hospitals or the old hospitals making new um, St. Vincent's and the hospital in Long Beach that they can be brought up to speed for all of the coronavirus victims that are mm -hmm. on the way. Amen. 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 I'd like to pray for Frank and Yane and Evan and Rachel stay healthy and bring us another beautiful service like this next Sunday. <laughs> Amen. 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 I, play, I pray for the, the, the Zoom platform. Which <laughs> yes. <together>. Amen. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm lonely. <laughs> so happy to see you guys. Yeah. Likewise. Amen. Happy to see you. Amen. Nice.
I, I'd like to pray for all of those who right now who are deprived of human touch. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Journey with us, O oh holy God, as we continue our way to the cross. Sharpen our focus that our attention may center more on you than on ourselves. Lead us through the shadows of darkness and prepare our hearts that we might be a people of prayer, ready to perceive and respond to your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 As we move toward the close of our service, uh, the general thanksgiving is included, and this is something that we will all say together, but Yane will be uh, the only one unmuted, and the rest of us will say it muted. Let us pray together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory, and we pray Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now I will lead us in the prayer of St. Chrysostom, and I invite you all to say it in your own space. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, our Lord, our desires and petitions as may best be for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. As I say the final blessing uh, and Rachel sings and leads us in the final hymn, which you are invited to join in on, following that, Yane will unmute all of us once again, and we can simply greet one another uh, in holy pandemonium, all right? So receive this blessing. May the grace of God, deeper than our imagination, the strength of Christ, stronger than our need, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, richer than our togetherness, guide and sustain us today and in all our tomorrows. Amen. Hello. Hi. 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 Pandemonium. 
I know on, on, on my smartphone, if you swipe it to the left, you can see everyone. Oh, I'm gonna yeah, I'm try looking that. at everyone. I see, my... I so see everyone. Screen sharing, uh, they're recording. Huh, that's interesting. All right. Huh. Looks like everyone's in church. Oh, my God. Hello. Oh, here we're having fun. Hi, Annie. Hi, Annie. <laughs> 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 See you Hi. on your, on your front steps listen, there. Let's, yeah. let's listen to Evan, yeah. and then we'll have our visiting. I didn't realize this was going to happen. Oh, there yeah. There we go. Surprise. Thank you. Hey. Oh, hey, Evan. Hello. There you are, Annie. <laughs> oh, great to see you all. Thank you, Evan. So how is everybody uh, dealing with the quarantine? Anybody want to share stories? Just staying home. Staying home. OK, <clears> nice <throat> to see you, Ed. <laughs> if you speak, yes. we get to see you. Hi, hey, Carmini. Carmini. There's, hey, Carmini. There's Minnie. Carmini. There's Minnie. Hi, Carl. Hi, Judith. Hi. I'm trying to learn to not oh. touch my face. And I'm watching what you guys <laughs> not do that. How's it, how's it it's going, impossible. <laughs> possible. Hello, everybody. I don't know how to work this, but I am at my friend uh, Judy Marashi's, who, where I've been sheltering in place for weeks now. Oh, uh, wow. Good. Good to you see know how to work. Everybody. We can see you. I just I want to share that um, this is the third uh, zoom communion that I've had that's been amazing um, and um, I had two fam two family dinners I had a family dinner with my my niece and her boyfriend in San Francisco and my um, this, the sound is weird I'm gonna with my niece and her boyfriend in San Francisco, and then also with um, my brother and his wife and son in their apartment in Silver Lake. And we all like showed each other the food. And then yesterday we had dinner with my husband's mother, who's isolated by herself now in um, Canada, and her, and her daughter, my sister-in-law, um, who is in Toronto. And I, and I, would love for us to do the same after church, like have a coffee class. Yeah. We could still yeah. share coffee and pastries. <laughs> Thank you for figuring that out for us. <laughs> I, I would love, or and we could still take communion also. I mean, you could hold up the wafer and we could have our own wafer and our own goblet. We can have a little bread and a little goblet. And so we could still take communion. I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a great idea. The consecration works across the ether. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, a lot of churches are doing it that way. So. Yes. I just can't tell you how much my, my Italian mother-in-law loved making pizza for us yesterday in her kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What a pizza. Looking forward to getting back and tasting Judith's pastries, however. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And I just want to say, I'm really glad to see a lot of familiar faces from a year, two years ago, and see new faces uh, via Zoom. This is a great platform to attend church. I'll not physically be there. So I'm just grateful to see all of y'all again. Wonderful to see you back. Yeah, James. So, really great, to see you, James. great to have you join us. Yeah. So how is Phil, Dolores? How is Phil? Phil is much better. Um, he uh, <clears throat> uh, he's still recovering, but he is walking 
uh, mostly without a cane. Uh, um, when we uh, came <coughs> here four weeks ago, he was walking with a walker and graduated to a cane, and now he is walking mostly independently. We still need prayer for the hearing in his left ear. Um, it hasn't come back yet, but we are praying that it will. And um, it's going to be a while to recover from this brain stem surgery, but he's in good spirits, and we are at a lovely home with lovely friends. Thank you. Good. Thanks for the update. We'll continue to pray for Phil. Yes. I spoke with Betts this last week, and uh, she would love phone calls. And so um, <coughs> those of you who received the email um, have her uh, telephone number. And she, of course, is, you know, there in Hollenbeck, and they are um, not leaving. So um, please give her a call. She's doing well uh, physically and her health at this point, which is sort of amazing because in a couple of weeks she'll be turning 94. Wow. <laughs> She's great. Good for her. So with, um, that's a good segment. My birthday is on Tuesday and uh, I am officially confirmed elderly. I'll be 66. <laughs> Oh, you're just a baby. <laughs> you are a baby. <laughs> baby. You're a snapper. Yeah. yeah, it's true. And I am still working. I, you know, I think most of you know I'm a chaplain at Providence St. Joseph Medical Center. So the past week in the hospital has been very interesting as they set up triage tents in the parking lot and they're mm -hmm. emptying the hospital of all of the patients and... <laughs> There are no visitors for the patients who remain except for one patient for the dying. And Annie, really I want to reel there. And I, yeah. mm -hmm. Annie, I want to ask your advice about something. I'm, I, I put out a little, okay. um, I put out a video trying to start a, a drive for gloves and masks. Many people, have N95 gloves, uh -huh. and, I mean N95 gloves in their in their, their garage or, or something. And um, would you right. know of, of, of what hospitals in Los Angeles most need those sanitary masks and gloves to be donated to them? Uh, there's little doubt in my mind any that any hospital yeah, you took them to would need them. Okay, thank you. Something, yes, you're welcome. Out of, I work for the Providence Health and Services System, yeah. and in one of our hospitals was the first hospital. And they started running out of the personal uh, equipment, and somebody started making masks. And so I'm going to send this big for people to make these things at home or in some kind of workspace that I'm sure some of you would be interested in. But Frank and Yane after that, so we can get the information out in a in an email, so you can know more about it. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else want to share something? <laughs> uh, we're we're in, taking walks around uh, Echo Park Lake for exercise in the evening. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, actually. I have a question. <clears throat> How is the volume on the organ accompaniment for this week? Was it loud or quiet or anything we should change for next week? It was. I need um, I, I need okay. Yeah, it, was, it worked. Thank you. It was okay, Evan. Thanks. Okay, that was great. That was great. For me, for me, Evan, it was very quiet and inconsistent. Oh yeah, part of it's just the quality of your of everybody's connections going to yeah. go. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why it sound louder. Yeah, but, it loud. but nobody else was. Just the organ for me. Yeah, it's because of how huh. the um, software compresses it. I, I so got you. 
you can hear vocals, but um, <coughs> the type thing gets compressed a little bit. But right. I'll, I'll actually I'll use a little a few more higher frequencies to make sure it's it's still present. Hi. Uh, so uh, I'll be joining two other friends a week from now to host uh, something like this for the Filipino American community in LA. Nice. Many of um, our friends who are caregivers need a lot of support in terms of just trying to understand uh, what's going on and also trying to understand what their options are if caregiving is no longer an option. <laughs> These uh, friends are members of the Filipino Worker Center and also they're uh, trying to find resources that they can tap into. Uh, for example, they're running out of rice and Filipinos are fond of rice. Mm -hmm. And uh, also they're, they're uh, losing their insurance benefits, health insurance benefits and so on and so forth. And many of them are undocumented as well. So there's a lot of anxiety what's going to happen to them um, if in case they get the virus and they can't get, you know, uh, medical uh, attention. Mm. So um, pray for us as we try to um, share resources, as we try to uplift them and comfort them, and as we try to uh, come up with some very practical options for them to, um, to uh, use as they try to... Uh, um, grapple with the uh, upcoming issues. Thank you. Um, Amanda, I'd, I'd like to be in touch with you about that. I've been in touch with a lot of people that work with senior caregivers. Oh, okay. Um, oh, very good. I've been thinking about how to reach out to caregivers a lot. So we, oh, we'll yeah. e let's email. Mo most of them, I think 99% of them are caregivers actually. And uh, a few are now beginning to really get worried because um, uh, they're losing patients or something like that. Yeah, it's, I think there's, that's another kind of crisis waiting to happen is elderly <laughs> caregivers and the, mm -hmm. and the elderly mm -hmm. thing yep. hasn't really been yeah. worked Thank out. You. Thanks. And especially if there's not enough protective gear for the workers. Exactly. exactly. So exactly. thank you for what you're doing with that, Heather. Well, I'm inspired by my parents who were, you know, the great generation and in World War II, they did scrap metal drives. So why can't we do a household um, mass right. drive? My husband is a, a painting contractor. So there's a lot yeah. of people like him who have a box in the garage. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, that's good. I'd like to thank you, Frank, for setting this up. Good job. Yes. Well, Give I'm, this guy a raise. Uh, <laughs> it, does anybody I think it's fun to get to see everybody's house <laughs> yeah. like, like even yeah. on the news on the news you get to see like ooh your bookcase <laughs> yeah I see <laughs> your yeah there's your books <laughs> Frank is sitting on a throne yes are you Frank <laughs> I, I am now because I got so tired of standing <laughs> For a long good time, <laughs> I'm sitting on these bamboo cha this bamboo chair. <laughs> oh, it looks good. <laughs> oh, that's it's nice. Um, but I, I was saying I want to thank Yane because all of the technical yes. things uh, really depended on her. Um, I'm all thumbs when it comes to that, and she was actually the host of the meeting, so she's the one that was doing the muting and unmuting and and all of that, and and sent out the original link. So. Thank you. He Yane. needs a race too, Frank. Yes. yes Thank yes, you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing this. Yes. Yeah. yeah well, we will, we will do it again next week and we <clears throat> continue to figure out ways to perfect it. So, you know, if. I, I'd like, <laughs> well, and I'd like to mention that mm. um, Yane and her husband are hosting a uh, morning prayer every morning at nine o'clock um wow oh if you okay. find her on facebook there's a link there where i can send it to you but i i really nice. managed to do it twice last week and i've decided that i want to make that part of the structure of my day because i think 
that's one thing we're all dealing with is is how to structure our days um so being ready to sit down for morning prayer as i was on friday was like a great way to do friday mm -hmm. and it's also that that's where i got the idea of unmuting everybody at the end because that's what they do at the end of the morning prayer and it's it's really a time to be connected to people when we're mm -hmm. not um, right. So that's that's another reason to be a part of that. It's it is a nice thing to do. So, um, my group. Um, to join. <clears throat> I'll I'll actually put the link in the chat box. Oh, that's great. Here. I'd like that's, to offer oh, two ahead. things. No, no, Maybe ahead. I'll I'll send a link too. Um, I discovered um this really fantastic group of actors all over the English speaking world who are doing every single play by William Shakespeare oh. on, on Zoom from separate locations, all on YouTube video live. So oh, wow. I'll send you the link. It's called The Show Must Go Online. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> great title. <laughs> it's a good Shakespeare play like every week, I think, or maybe every day. Anyway, <laughs> the actors are great. Oh, that would be great. Nice. What a great way to do it. Good. Father, would you mind sending me uh, the bulletin next week? Yes, I'm sorry. Are you, did you not get the email yesterday? No, I did not. Okay, I need to uh, re-up your, um, your email address. I will send that. Great, thanks. And add you to the list so that you get future ones. Thank and you. Um, we're trying to, you know, Yane is, um, trying to figure out with um, other folks if there's a way of doing the Zoom and also Facebook Live simultaneously or uploading the, the recording of this to Facebook Live so that people who weren't here um, for the actual service can still participate. So, um, but we haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> you might wanna stop the recording after the, when we do the personal. Right. <laughs> yeah. But some people might like that the best. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Just everybody be aware that you're being recorded. That's right. <laughs> I still see that little REC in red up at the top corner of my That's it. I see it. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're being recorded. Oh, there. All right. Happy Sunday, everyone. See you next week. Happy yes. Sunday. Yeah. Happy Sunday. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Evan. Thank Thanks, Thanks Rachel. Thank you. Thank you. Great, Great job. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.